Okay, Jay Clark here. We are with a really cool bike. You gotta check out this complete video. Our buddy Michael Fisher from Nebraska rebuilt this 1989 RM125 and did an incredible job. And he's got some step-by-step -step time lapse of this build that's just incredible. Project right here, this bike is really rough. This isn't for somebody who's looking to do a budget rebuild. This is in need of a full re restoration. So you gotta decide what your goals are. In this case, this bike is gonna need a ton of money put into it and time, and so that's something to consider. So you really wanna look at that. These kind of projects are for those guys that are wanting to restore a childhood memory or just really love these bikes like Michael does. And one of the easiest, funnest parts of these builds is tearing it down. Enjoy that part of it, but I say take your time when you're tearing it down. Make notes. I think it's really important to make notes and take photos along the process because it's gonna be months or even like my buddy Ratto, it could be a year or two before you get this thing back together. It's fun watching Michael work on this. We just enjoy watching this stuff come apart. You can see how easily it makes it look, you know, at this uh, time-lapse speed. Um, but you can get them apart pretty quick and it kind of assess what your situation is and, and what kind of work you need to do. Having the proper tools is critical, like a flywheel puller there. Electronics are nice to really, that's another place to really take good photos so you can remember how to, the wiring was run. Michael's got that gun hanging from his pants, that speed gun. Uh, he's a professional here at tearing this thing down. Got that frame sitting out there, all ready to go. One of the things that a lot of the powder coaters like is for you to uh, power wash your frame. Get all that grease off there before you take it to the powder coater guy and look for cracks or any dents that you want to weld up before before it's too late. Okay, we got the engine on the bench here. It's in an engine stand, uh, you know, that looks really nice for these photos and you can catch some really cool stuff, uh, you know, in this thing like, uh, you know, draining the oil, this looks really cool. But you don't have to have a cool stand like this to work on the bench. You can have uh, some two by fours blocks of wood are really easy and nice to, uh, to work on when you have that engine on the bench. You can see just how worn those cases are. Those cases had, a, it's like a clear coat on there and um, kind of hard to clean up. So you can see it's worn through. This thing had some good time on it, but I will say I believe that a lot of these older bikes like this, especially the Japanese ones, were built a lot better. How do you like that sludge in there? That's pretty uh, cool looking. So we got some sludge down in these cases and uh, it's an old bike. I mean, this thing's over, well over 30 uh, years old, and that's what happens. I suggest when you're taking apart your first engine, if you haven't done one, Try to do it with, with a friend, uh, a buddy, an uncle. Um, I did it with my uncle the first uh, time or two. And um, and even if you have to pay somebody, if you got somebody to shop that'll do it with you, got to have some good tools, case splitter. When I was young, we didn't have, we just uh, used blocks of wood and some brass pieces to, to do it. If you're gonna pry on cases, be really careful. Really, really careful. Prefer not to ever see anybody pry on cases uh, with a screwdriver or anything like that. 
So you don't want to leave any marks in the cases where you could have an air leak potentially later and so forth. So be real careful of that. It's a lot of work and time in these projects. Uh, we, we were trying to figure it out how many hours Michael had in this thing and I don't know if we can truly ever know. Um, the work isn't just in the shop here like you know pulling these bearings out. It isn't just this work but it's all the research work getting on the computer looking stuff up and trying to find parts and um, you, you can have hours almost the same amount of time or more in there looking. Those chain adjuster bolts can oftentimes be stuck in a swing arm. So lucky they weren't because that can really just be a game changer on a swing arm. Uh, so always grease those. You can see the having a press really helps to uh, get all these bearings out. And you see he's not everything's supported correctly here as Michael's working on this. You want to make sure that you're doing a good job. And he's not using any real fancy tools. You can just you can use sockets. He's got some extensions, and you can uh, size everything up. And you're not going to damage anything, but you can do damage if you're not careful. The brakes on these bikes, they take a lot of abuse. They get down there and get oxidized and worn out, so they're going to need a full rebuild. Uh, we have some videos and so forth showing some more in depth here, but this is a, a quick look at uh, getting these things apart, and it's a lot of, a lot of work in here. You want to be careful with what you're doing. Vapor blasting, he uses Premier Vapor Blasting and they helped him uh, clean up these parts. And Vapor Blasting is a new tool we have. We used to only have sand blasting. Vapor Blasting puts such a better finish on things. Uh, it can really clean up. Most people want, you want to get all that grease off first, like in a solvent tank. And then Vapor Blasting can just give you this kind of finish. It's just incredible. The finishes look almost better than stock in a lot of cases. Um, really looks nice. And with some parts like this, this is pretty custom. Michael's going to just clean up and buff before he paints on these uh, engine cases and even do some custom, you know, Bondo work to the ignition cover. You can see he does a really good job of that. The sandblasting will kind of even things out, uh, take away some of the nicks and so forth. This is the Bondo I'm talking about, like, look. You can, you can do some little work on a part that's not available anymore. You can't just go buy one of these somewhere. And any used one you find is probably going to be just as bad or worse. custom paint booth. It so shows you don't have to uh, make anything real fancy to have a paint booth. You can make it out here, outside here. You don't have paint going all over your vehicles or in your shop. And uh, you notice Michael's wearing a mask. And uh, he's safety first. Kudos to Michael for uh, being safety conscious. Four coats and a clear coat. I think he's got it pretty good. ICW straightened and welded up these radiators, but uh, these things are pretty visible and they were always uh, painted, so getting them back to black looks really nice. Powder coating, we all know, is the ticket. For if, you, if you want it to really look good and last a long time, it's so nice. So, out in California, we use San Diego powder coating. They know all the places to tape off because they're kind of specialists, they're owned by motorcycle guys. Um, not all of them do. Like this one doesn't have a lot of uh, some things taped off where, where you mount the coil and where your engine goes in. Some of those areas you're going to have to sand off before you do that.
we were able to weld on some works connection extenders. I actually welded those out here in California uh, with my welder Dallas, did a great job. And then he got them powder coated to match the frame. That looks really sweet, huh? And just cleaned up those springs and new foot peg pins, washers, cotter pins. Really nice looking. All these bolts, you, a lot of these, like that nut, you can get new, but a lot of them you can't. So you're just gonna clean them up. A buffing wheel like uh, Prime has, uh, Cameron Namella has these uh, little buffing pads he, he distributes out. Uh, they're really good for doing this kind of stuff. I like, like a scotch Bright type wheel. Wire wheels are good for like that middle part of the bolt, but the rest of it, you, you'd rather get a, you know, on this bolt, I would rather get a new one on that nut for the rear axle. Some of them aren't too expensive, but the big bolts, they can be pretty costly. That looks amazing, doesn't it? Looks so nice, and we just did some of this similar stuff with uh, Rattles build that we're working on uh, with MX Revival. He also does some as well. Pause right there a second. Okay, so on a lot of these older bikes, a lot of parts aren't available. We really wanted to run FMF. It's hard to find one. We had to do some custom work to make it look this amazing. Had to strip it and uh, make this thing look good as new. Some parts like this basket, pretty notched up and worn out. You can use a grinder to grind these heads off when you're changing out a basket. A um, little quicker than a drill. You know, drill, you just wipe out the drill bits. A grinder, but you gotta be careful not to hit the big uh, wheel there. Time to get started uh, putting these things back together. Heat your friend when it goes to putting bearings in. Heat up that aluminum, it, 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 gets, it expands so much. That's why you see guys heat up surfaces. I like to fr even freeze the bearings, then you're getting twice the, uh, the impact. Guys will wonder why there's grease in those seals, and that's so. It runs smoothly on the shaft and there's no chance of it getting cut by the, the shaft sliding in there. Us moto guys, watching this, I think is the same as, you know, regular people watching the waves crash on the beach. This will just lull you into a nice, peaceful, calm feeling watching the transmission moving nicely and shifting perfectly like this. Too many days in the darkness Without a glimpse of the light Running tired and broken and scared But I swear I'll never give up the fight I see you. 
broken and beat Had pulled down over your eyes Every part of you wants to surrender Darling, you were meant to survive With every... You notice the brand new spec bolts uh, We went the original look and finish Not their uh, newer style looking one So it kind of looked more original Brand new washer, even on that drain bolt those drain bolts can get uh, stripped out quite often, so I always like to check those threads while the cases are apart in case you got to repair them. It's a lot easier to do it when the cases are apart. I would use a hand impact, uh, air impact on that that nut, or check the uh, torque. Wouldn't hold it with a Motion Pro tool. Nice fresh clutch plates going there. It looks so nice. Assembly, assembly lube is really nice to have in a lot of those places that have some, you know, surfaces that uh, you want to make sure pre-lubed before there's oil in the cases. One thing I have to remember is when you're putting these things together, if there's any binding or problems, don't force it because you can break something. So something's usually wrong. These things usually go together pretty smoothly. Head Racing cleaned up the cylinder and power valve area for us on this thing for Michael and you can see how nice it looks. Too many days in the darkness without a glimpse of the light Running tired and broken and scared but I swear I'll never give up the fight I see you broken and beat Installing studs, you don't need a fancy tool, just a couple of nuts and a couple of wrenches you can put the studs on. Not too bad. We are born again. Open your heart. Spend less time in your head. Head nuts are probably the ones you really need to to properly torque when you go in a crossing pattern. That little white clip on the power valve, that then of course I saw Michael has a brand new fresh one, which is of course what you'd want to have on there because those things will dry out and, and break. Installing the V-Force on these, some of these older bikes, you have to do this little custom cutting on the, uh, the stock boot because the V-Force already has that kind of shape in there. A V-Force we find is one of the best mods for a two-stroke for the money, for performance. On the more modern bikes, uh, most of the OEMs have kind of copied a lot of the uh, V-Force design. You don't have to have the carburetor on your bench, but it sure looks cooler when it's sitting here in the garage, right Ratto? And when it's spinning around like this, it looks like magic. You could, we could watch this thing spin here for 10 minutes alone, right? Those brand new spec bolts just look so nice for this thing. So getting back to the chassis, it's a lot easier many times installing bearings with an all thread like that, that setup, than rather than pressing them in and risk damaging the bearings, the, the brand new bearings, a lot of times it can be easy to damage those. So a lot of times it's easier just with a setup like what Michael has right here. Motion Pro has these, 
very nice and simple way to do it. This is one of the best feelings, getting that engine back in the frame, getting the swing arm hooked up, those triple clamps on. It starts to look like a bike again. So a lot of times it can be in this kind of state for a while while you're gathering up the rest of your parts. But when you get it to this point right here, it just is a good feeling because you know there's light at the end of the tunnel. These old bikes, you know, the timing marks are, are right there on the, uh, the stator. And they have a stock mark, usually really easy to, to find. You can see he buffed off the, uh, the grounds there for his coil going on. So how Michael double checked after he tightened stuff up he made sure that the swing arm and linkage all moved freely some if you have something wrong it could bind up so really nice to be able to just simply check that real quick Cleaned up the stock hoses, uh, vapor blasting, able to clean those up. Sure looks nice with the brand new bolts again. Now Michael had the radiator cap on there. That's kind of a big no-no. I'm always worried about uh, at, the, at the end of the process forgetting that you don't have uh, coolant in there. I'm sure Michael wouldn't forget, but we would. We're working on too much stuff around here. I used to be a free man. Did whatever I did please. Ever since she wandered in that. ODI has 7.8 bars, which I, I really like the feel of these on these older bikes. You don't need big bars, and most of these bikes are being built more of a nostalgia than, than needing to have a big bar bin. We got this suspension redone out with Racetech in California. It took a bit of work. We had to get some shock parts, uh, shock shaft Michael found online. A lot of these older bikes, it is a nightmare on suspension, on getting that suspension uh, sorted out. So that's something that a lot of people don't calculate on and I warn people of is, is suspension. With our ODI, we like to run clamp-on uh, grips, but they do have conventional grips like this for cases where we don't have a proper throttle tube for this bike. You can just run the regular glue-on grips. Got our air box prepped and really, and you can see how nice this thing came out after uh, vapor blasting. Of course, the Electron Carb is the only modern-looking thing, at, you know. Um, not critical to this build, but it, it sure looks cool and uh, gives it a more modern feel. When you get lonely in the shop, you can have your dog out there keeping you company. 
moving stuff around. Bolting up that thousand dollar pipe with all that work in there. So, you want to take care of that thing. Fresh pack sounds here. Nothing better than that sound of that two stroke coming out of that little shorty. Oh, what's this? An aluminum gas tank from Europe. Not necessary, but sure pretty cool. So it comes kind of pretty crude looking. Um, to keep the cost down, I think, on these tanks, they really wanted to, you know, they just kind of came the way they came as far as the aluminum finish. And most guys weren't building show bikes. They're kind of building some vintage bikes to race or post-vintage, we'll say. So Michael buffed on this thing, cleaned it up a bit. Uh, so it looked nice on the bike. Uh, Hand-built tank, sure looks pretty spiffy. I used to be a free man. Did whatever I did please. But ever since she wandered in that, I've been living down on my knees. Got our uni filter going on here. I'm not sure if this bike's ever gonna see dirt, but he's got it properly oiled, so that'll be nice. I don't know, I don't, I don't think it ever will, which is uh, kind of nice for a bike like this. New IMS shifter, they actually make one that fits up nice. Here, Michael's adjusting the power valve. There's a setting, you know, I'd have to look it up. I remember back, because I had one of these bikes in 91, uh, RMs, uh, 250, and you would adjust your power valve with this thing, and you'd have like three quarters or one turn preload on that spring. So I think Michael's getting the magic setting for that uh, power valve spring. Looks like he went to two turns there or so. So we'll see. Uh, Whispers are the sweetest sound. She said, Come on, lock me up. Lights out whenever you want. Phone calls through the glass. Waiting for the time to pass. Write me letters to sign them with an I love you. Promise you won't change. I'll head out and buy your brain. Getting your uh, oil and coolant finally in the bike is a great feeling, you know. So now it's getting close to, you got these two things in, it's getting close to startup time. And here's the last thing you need to start her up, is some fresh mix, pre-mix gas. More gas, Michael. Give it more. The best feeling ever. 
I don't know what this game is right here. That's the best feeling ever right there. Rado knows this feeling. I used to get excited about it. Uh, not so much anymore because we've done so many. But it is a pretty cool feeling when you finish a long build. When, and then you're not even finished. You still have a lot of work to do. But you get this thing started. And you know there's a... Uh, it's not too much left to go. Vapor blast cabinet in your garage is pretty nice to have around that you can just go do it at any time. And these wheels are, are really nice because you can't really dig in and mess up stuff. That's what's nice about these kind of wheels. If you try to do it on a grinder or files, you can do too much. You can see how nice this piece came out. Didn't have to go get a new one and they're hard to find or probably near, nearly impossible to find. like that lift uh, a lot of guys like that lift guys get on me for not having a lift like that if I was doing a long-term project like this it is kind of nice to have that thing sitting on there and you can move it up and down as you need to pretty nice uh, Tusk has those oh this tool I forgot the name of this tool we use this on another build and uh, because these these holes can't take a time cert there's not enough room this tool will pop them in there and uh, get you some new threads metric eight millimeter threads probably for that size for those bolts got a 10 a 10 or 12 it looks like a 12 head on there so that's the proper way to do it what michael did right there she said come on lock me up lights out whenever you want phone calls through the glass waiting for the time to pass write me letters to race tech did a hard uh anodize on the the lowers there and uh, that co coats the inside as well. So we're able to, as I mentioned earlier, suspension's a big source of problems for us in a lot of these builds. Um, sometimes you can have a lot of money into the suspension or as much or more than you paid for the bike or the rest of the work can be just in suspension on some of these older bikes. So that's a really area to be careful of. So now these brake pieces going into this uh, vapor blaster. One thing I would recommend is blocking off the holes where the pistons go in. You don't want to make those any larger. And of course you're going to clean them out and you can get to rebuilding these things. When the sky outside these bars is all gray. So you actually use brake fluid as your lube um, instead of grease, obviously. So just use brake fluid as your lube as you're assembling these things. Bolting up that master cylinder and brake lever. See, Michael went with a stock looking brake lever and clutch lever rather than using our mainstay works connection uh, levers just to give it that good look. Galfer was able to make us lines that uh, were the same as this 89. We actually had to send them our sample ones. Same thing on the rear, you're going to clean up all these pieces and you can see how much work and time it, there is involved in doing this. And Michael having his own cabinet really helps and saves a lot of time and money on this kind of work, if, unless you have somebody right next to you or close to you that can help you with it. If anybody's doing an 89, RM125, RM250, anywhere in that range, Galfer knows the spec to make these brake lines because of us. We sent them the samples and 
Now they've got a nice spec for you and you can see they fit really nicely. Uh, bleeding lines by yourself isn't a lot of fun. Bleeding lines period isn't typically a lot of fun. Uh, so it's best to have a, a friend or a wife who wants to come out at, uh, I think Michael works until you know one or three in the morning on these at times, so he's probably not getting anybody out to help him. Wheel building, um, I actually just built my first wheel not that long ago and it's actually not too bad. Watching some videos and uh, Michael's got a good little process going. Walking down the avenue where we used to play The house on the corner is still the same today As it was when we were children Innocent as innocent can be Look at that nice true wheel. Not too bad. Oh, using soap on the tire install with no gloves. Oh, and he doesn't have the tube in the tire. Michael's not been watching my videos, Rattle. Those were the times. Okay, we got some new uh, Galfred rotors as well. And we got our rims and spokes from uh, Faster USA helped us with those. And, and uh, Michael's able to assemble them in Nebraska. Of course, we have our Dunlop tires. Here I can see that we were blind to the burdens we would shoulder and the struggles we would find. But growing made us strong as strong can be. and able to run our chain on here. Those were the time. You want to get that chain slack set correctly. Michael had a buddy at a Harley uh, shop over there in Nebraska where he lives that was able to help him uh, dyno in these things because it was uh, cold Wintertime couldn't really run them up and down the roads. So being able to get them on the dyno to make sure things running well, uh, really nice uh, help. Cool to see these things run. He's got some support helping him. Uh, it took a while to crate these things up in Nebraska. We actually sent a few bikes out at the same time, but we got them all trucked out here to California. And the reason for this is we there's no magazines to shoot these things in Nebraska. So Michael really wanted to see these things run, and I, and I enjoyed. Uh, starting these things up. And we're able to uh, make some cool custom frame tape that Decal Works was able to help us with and uh, make some templates. And so if you're ever uh, in need of these things, Decal Works has these. How nice is that? So got some real nice custom graphics for this thing for our dirt bike magazine shoot you borrowed mine from me we sat and talked for hours in a box hung in a tree I failed to mention that uh, Millennium helped us with that cylinder and it came out really nice and seeing that logo there just reminded me of that 
I think the bike looks better in my shop. Should have kept it out here, huh? Those were the times. Those were the ways. So take me back. So take me back to the good old days. So we made up some graphics for the tank. We've shot it both ways. And then people go, why'd you cover up the tank? I was worried it was a little too much uh, shiny. We shot it both ways. Um, and I think most people preferred it with the uh, bare aluminum look. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed watching this uh, whole video. Now you got to check out what this thing looks like. Here we go. Look at that. Ta-da. It's incredible, huh? What do you think, it Michael? It's awesome. It's amazing. Is, it is so cool. And the, the look is amazing. Uh, from the graphics to the the, powder, the color of powder coat you got done, mm -hmm. matched up with our Decal Works graphics, the seat, that, that blue and yellow looks so cool. It's incredible. So, I mean, everybody that watched the video got to see this thing all come together. It's pretty amazing. All right, here's a few pictures from our photo shoot at Dirt Bike uh, Magazine where we got it in their little photo studio. We've got Mark Tilly here shooting photos. He really enjoyed the bike and spending time with Michael Fisher and his dad and uh, just a good time and everybody knows legendary dirt bike magazine so it's pretty nice to have this thing going here and michael it made michael's uh day week month year uh being able to get this thing seen here in, in dirt bike magazine it was fun shooting it and then as you can see now in this uh issue of dirt bike magazine you can see the bike laid out and see the final result looks pretty cool pretty amazing result from what this thing started looking like and what it looks like now Hopefully you guys enjoy two strokes. I think most people do fixing up these old two strokes. We've talked about this before that it probably yeah. doesn't make a ton of financial sense, right? No, it doesn't. But <laughs> <laughs> but when you see what when you see this at the end, I mean, it's all worth it. Like yeah. it's going to be a cool display piece. And that's what we talk about. It's it, it's probably worth it if you build it yourself for yourself, or you're building it with your son, your brother, whatever, your uncle. You're doing it with somebody or yourself, and you're that's what your got your goal's got to be. You're not going to be able to. Build something like this to make money at and sell it no. and make money. Pretty pretty tough, right? For sure. <laughs> Don't tell your wife. <laughs> All right. So hopefully you enjoyed watching. Check you out later. See ya.